The officials assigned by the Texas authorities for the next bout of the evening. The judges are Rock Desario, Jack Woodruff, and uh, Gary Snapka. The timekeeper is Lloyd McFarland. Counting through the knockdowns are R.H. Carol Ballou, the attending physician at ringside, Dr. Cordell Clark, and the referee for the next bout of the evening is Lawrence Cole. The opening bout of the night, 10 rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Introducing in the red corner, fighting out of Soweto, South Africa, weighing in at 135 and one half pounds, with a professional record of 21 wins, no defeats, one draw with 14 KOs. He is the undefeated Rose of Soweto, Ningan Topella. And in the blue corner, from Houston, Texas, weighing an even 136 pounds, his professional record consists of 26 wins, 13 losses, one draw, with 19 KOs. Here's the hard-punching Pasquel Aranda. Judges tonight, Rock DeSario, Jack Woodruff, Lawrence Cole, and the alternate Jerry McKenzie. Well, my and we're all set for our opening bout. Dingan Tubella versus Pasquale Macho Aranda. Tubella, 135 and a half pounds, and Aranda at 136 and a half, so slightly over the lightweight regulation. And Aranda is an aggressive type fighter. However, he says tonight in this fight, he's going to try to give more room to Tobella. This is just what Tobella wants. He wants for Aranda to come right after him. Tobella's the best when he can take that half step back, reset, and then load and fire. Aranda, it'll be interesting to see how he fares early, has not fought in over a year. He was KO'd in the second round by Kenny Bayshore. Well, he turned pro back in October of 81. He was knocked out in one by a debuting Stevie Cruz. Stevie Cruz, that name sound familiar? It, it was does. Cruz's first fight, but he went on to win the WBA featherweight title. Reggie Watson stopped him in four his next time out. In December of 84, he took a 16-8 record in with Calvin Grove, the former IBF champion of the world, before uh, being taken out in three by the future champ. His best showing has to be with Mike Ayala back in September of 85. He went the distance of 12 and lost to the NABF champ. In July of 87, he went 10 rounds. He got stopped by the current WBA featherweight champion, Antonio Esparagosa. But he came back nicely in March of 88 when he beat Thomas G Gonzalez in 10. Then, in his last fight, as you mentioned, he was stopped in two by Kenny Baseball. Now, he's only had three fights in just as many years. He says he needed the rest, but he's starting busy here in this first round. Ronda, 27 years old, and Tobella, 23. And Tobella in the white trunks with the green stripe. He's been boxing since June of 86 when he turned pro after a star-studded amateur career with 86 bouts. He picked up the Transvaal light, uh, junior lightweight title against Gerald Isaacs back in March of 88. Defended it successfully in July against Paul Molifiani. His next one, uh, next fight, he won the South African junior lightweight title over M. Piseke Mbadule. Spelling, please. Wow. And that was back in October of, of 1988. Last time I saw him was against Francisco Alvarez. He looked very impressive in stopping his foe in nine. In his last fight, January of 90, he stopped Felix Orozco in nine rounds. That was the heaviest he's fought until now. Now he's moved up to the lightweight division. Tonight, 135 and a half, just a half pound over that division. Seems to be picking up power as he's picking up weight. And if you're... Oh, you can see on the trunks of Tubella, that's King Corn, not King Kong that he has printed on there. And he is the Rose of Soweta. He comes from Soweta, Johannesburg, South Africa. Very proud of uh, the people there who have supported him through his career. A lot of good things from Tobella. Now look how on the inside he's got those hands up around his ears like earmuffs to protect from the hooks. He realized that all right. Aranda is a wide sweeping puncher.
Dingan Tobella. Slow first round, but that's just what Tobello wants. He wants to be able to pick his shots and set up his offense from that first round. How would you score that opening round, Sean? Well, in that first round, Tobella controlled the pace. He didn't get hit with any wild shots. He didn't get excited. So for that first round, I, I would score it for him. He kept control of the fight. Pasquale Aranda had a pretty good opening round. He threw some punches, didn't land very much, and he can't waste his shots on the hands or on the elbows of Tobella. Aranda out of Houston, Texas. There's Hector Rocha looking over Aranda, giving him some final instructions. Aranda gets ready for the second round. There's Dingan Tubella. Round two here on Home Sports Entertainment. And they're coming out a little bit more active here to start the second round, particularly Tubella. And there's just what Aranda's going to have to contend with, that speed of Dingan Tobella. The way he's going to have three guys go downstairs, and he's trying to do that, but Tobella's so fast right now. Aranda, after one. missing and getting caught on the ropes, then comes back to tie him up. Then Gunn trying to desperately to use his jab and use the lateral movement. The best thing about him, too, is his speed. Looks like he might have opened up a small cut on the right, the left eye of Aranda. Oh, and that's in a nasty position. Over the eye like that, the doctor uh, will stop a fight. The doctor has the power to stop a fight here in Texas under the Texas rules. Now, if they rule that that was from an intentional headbutt, then uh, obviously one of the fighters would be disqualified. But no holding, no pulling, a warning. From the referee, he's always got control of the fight. Tabella in the white with the green stripes and Macho Aranda in the maroon. There is Aranda trying to go downstairs. He's got to take that speed away from Tobella. Trying to keep that left hand up and protect that eye as best he can. And it's difficult to reach down to the body when you know you have to protect your head. Oh. Crunching blows by Tobella. Tobella just missing with that right uppercut. And Tobella going upstairs. Aranda reaching downstairs, and when he does, he's dropping his hands. So Tobella is uh, effective upstairs. can hear from some of the fans that uh, certainly Macho Aranda is the favorite here among the Texans. And that cut is be bleeding. It's in a nasty position just over the left eye. It's underneath the eyebrow, too. They've got some work to do over in his corner between rounds. You know, you cut like that, you don't really feel the cut. All you can feel sometimes is the blood trickling down. It kind of tickles your face. And you know now you're fighting out of desperation. you got to get those hands moving as Aranda is trying to do. But you still got to be careful because you take some more shots on that cut. It's going to open up wider. Well, Tubella had the advantage according to Sean in the opening round. And a big advantage in that second round. This uh, an important round, usually by about the third to fourth round, the fighters get into the mode of the fight. But here, Dingan Tobella kept calm in the first round, then came out the second round, opened up that cut. There's a lot of work going on over in that corner. That's Hector Rocha putting cut medicine on the laceration over the left eye in a nasty position. When you got up and coming fighters like this, Sean, I don't know if people realize sometimes how important that corner man and the people that are doing the work on you can be because as you rise and your purses are getting bigger, you can have the best in the world in your corner. What about the people that are here tonight? Well, the cut man is so vital in a situation like this. There are a few things that you can put on a cut. Adrenaline, 1 to 1,000 is one thing. Avatine or thrombin topical. They put that on the cut and they smear some Vaseline on top of it. Now, already that cut is bleeding here in this third round, the opening of the round. Blood just trickling down. Now the blood there and the cut 
is, is bad, but it's also mixed in with the sweat of your body. And this third round heating up. And Aranda coming out, maybe realizing he doesn't have too much longer to go with that nasty cut. He's trying to be as aggressive as he can and take it to Tabella. Well, he's got to be. Look at those body shots, trying to contend with that speed. You know, I was talking about that cut. Also, your body heat has really warmed up because now your, your heart's pumping real fast. It's hot out there in the ring. The lights from the television are also a major factor in a guy getting cut like that. It's going to make it thin the blood just a little bit more and come down. You get the, the water poured on the cut, it makes the, the blood come down also. You know, with a head cut, you know how people bleed and bleed and bleed. There's nothing up there except bone and, and, uh, and many, many people, there's just bone up there. <laughs> Unfortunately. The, the bone and the, and the uh, blood vessels. We're in the third round of our opening bout. Macho Aranda in big trouble in the maroon against Dingan Tubella from South Africa. That cut was opened up in the first round by Tobella. Oh, snapping right hand. He's got some power in that right. No more pulling from behind the head. What to Tobella is doing is he's pulling behind the head and making his opposition run into his punch, trying to add just a little bit more force to it. And now the doctor is going to step into the ring and take a look at the... Mm cut to That's see nasty. it's in a bad position Pasquale Aranda after Tubella being warned by the referee <laughs> round three Tubella and Aranda and Aranda hanging on Now this is what Aranda wants to do. He wants to get busy and thump that tub. Go downstairs, hit the body. Take that speed away from Tobella. A lot of speed, nine KOs and his 21 wins. I'm sorry, 14 KOs and his 21 wins for Tobella. And although Aranda has lost two of his last three fights, he does have 19 knockouts among his 26 victories. So certainly capable of coming back here. The final 10 seconds. Now this is where you really want to pour it on. You want to throw as many punches as you can to try to impress the judges. The last thing that a judge will remember is that last part of the round. And you try, you can many occasions, steal the round by just coming on the last 10 seconds. Muhammad Ali was great at that, coming on the final few seconds and uh, taking the round. Leonard also good at that. Dingan Tobella winning the first two. You give him the third round as well? Yes, he's in complete control of this match. Fights here scored on the 10-point must system, as we've said. Four things that the judges are looking for, effective aggressiveness, clean punches, defense, and ring generalship. We talked about the uh, heat. Sean mentioned that temperature in Dallas today in the mid-90s, and it was, certainly wasn't too much cooler when we walked in here this afternoon, and you put in a good group of fans and turn on those television lights, and things have really heated up in here. I'll tell you, it's probably 110 degrees inside those ropes. Plus, you're exercising out there. You're losing a lot of fluid, losing a lot of, of liquid from your body. And it, uh, it does take a toll. Round four, Miranda versus Tubella. A nice jab by Tubella. Now, this is where Tubella is at his best. He's taking that step back, he resets, plants his feet, and then he throws. This is a scheduled 10 rounder. Also, he's careful to hold those hands up around his face while his opponent is attacking. And that's just what Aranda is doing again here in this round. Remember the second round and the third round, Aranda's come out the first part of the round. 
tried to establish control in that round. All you have to do in a match is win it one round at a time. But I tell you, oh, nice right hand by Aranda. I've got Aranda way behind. But a good opening part of this round. And Tabella answers. One of the things that a fighter like Aranda has after a long layoff, oh, he has problems, he's going to have problems in the later rounds of this fight. And it looks as though Tobella is trying to take him to those later, later rounds. No amount, of, uh, no amount of conditioning can prepare you for the actual fight. Well, you know, conditioning for the fight is so much different than conditioning in the gym. You know, they all say, I've been in the gym for nine months. Well, nine months in the gym is not the same as nine months in a ring with the heat of the lights, the heat of the, the arena, the crowd screaming at you, your nerves are going plus. This is an elimination fight. The winner gets Manning Galloway, or I should say the winner of this match, gets the winner of Galloway and Estrada coming up a little bit later. Round four, as Tabella has been in control, we've got one minute remaining here in the fourth round. Tabella in the white and the green. But I tell you, that was a good opening part of this fourth round for Pasquale Aranda. He is. He has thrown the, the more punches. Dingan Tobella has thrown. A, has taken a break in this round. But what Tobella could do? We are here in the final half of this round, the final minute. What he could do is come on real strong now, and he might be able to steal this round. He could salvage it. There he is. Tabella some oh. vicious punches, but missing on most of them. Gets him in the corner in the final 15 seconds. Oh, some good, clean, crisp punches from Tobella. And you look at Tobella, he not only hits you with one punch, he hits you with three. Good combinations. We'll be back with more boxing here on HSE from the Longhorn Ballroom in Dallas, Texas. Dean Gon Tobella is wishing right now he had... Uh, some some water in his mouth. And I think they've called the fight as the ice pack has been applied in the opposite corner. There it is, a look at Pasquale Aranda as they have stopped this fight on a TKO. Well, he was cut in that first round, if you remember, and Bill from that is just problems after problems. He had his best round the last round, that fourth round, but still, this man, Dean Gantobella, came out and he established control to complete command of this fight. And that's, that's what I basically felt like what was going to happen in this fight. I just didn't think that Aranda was in the class of a Dingan Tobella. We'll have a chance to visit with Dingan Tobella in just a moment and Aranda being attended to. You see Chuck Call there. There's Aranda with the loss, his record dropping to 26 14 and 1 now. And he's lost three of his last four bouts in his first outing in better than a year. Not a successful one. And here's our winner, Dingan Tobella from South Africa, and let's go to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of the ringside position, Dr. Cordell Clark, the bout is stopped by the referee, Lawrence Cole, at the end of the fourth round, the winner by a TKO and still undefeated, the Rose of Soweto, Lingan Thobela. We'll be right back with more boxing action from the Longhorn Ballroom in Dallas, Texas. You're watching it on HSE. You looked impressive tonight. You had no, you had no problems at all with, uh, with Arella. Yeah, well, he's got a wild right, uh, right cross, you know? so uh, I knew that because they told me before that I must be careful of his right cross. Yeah. So I was just taking my time, you know, not being caught because he's got a good right cross, I, I feel it. Did you expect him, for him to be as aggressive as he was? Well, I didn't expect him. Did he play into your, into your game? Yeah, I think he played a new game, well, because I didn't, I didn't hear, well, when, when they say he's, he's, a, he's an aggressive fighter. And, uh, so it was a surprise to me. Now you you cut him in the in the first round. Did you go after the cut? Yeah, well, I was trying to 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 to, economize, to, to try and specialize on that cut and hit the cut all around so that it must open. Okay. Do uh, 
do, what do you think is ne next for Dean Gunn Tobelli? There's talk of a match with uh, the winner of our main event tonight. Yeah, well, uh, the winner of tonight's event is going to meet the world champion as the world champion that I've been, Marissa Xavis, so I'm going to meet him. How far How far away are you now? What do you have to do to be the world champion? Well, I, I think I'm ready for, to fight for the world championship. Uh, I'm just waiting for, for the promoters to clear the deal and then to get fired, that's all. All right, well, Dean Gan, good showing for you tonight. I don't think you got hit at all, did you? No, 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 I was not yet caught, you know how. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you got a little blood on your nose, but I think that's a blood from your opponent. Yeah, Dean Gan so Tobella. Okay, thank you, Sean. A good showing. Anything you want to say back to the people of Soweto? Yeah, really, I want to tell them that uh, we are just in, uh, in the door. We're going to fight for the world title. They might just wait for me. All right. Uh, Dean Gan, congratulations on your win. It looks as though a world title fight is on the way for this young man. Bill is down at ringside. Bill? Thank you, Sean.